Hello, dear students, in the previous lectures, we have completed the unit 1 and unit 2. Especially in unit 2, we have started with some structures of the cell. Especially, what is the cell wall, which organisms are having a cell wall, and what is the structure of the cell wall, what is the function of cell wall. And then we have seen about the cell membrane. Cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer which is in turn made up of protein arrangement there on both the sides of the phospholipid bilayer. Then we have seen the functions of the cell membrane. And we have seen what are the various models that have been proposed that says about the functioning of the cell membrane. So these are the things we have seen in the previous unit. This unit is concerned with various other cell organelles present there, which includes the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, lysosomes, microbodies. So these are all the various structures or cell organelles that have been present there mainly in the eukaryotic cell system, not in the prokaryote. Then some structures are specific for uh, plant or animal system. Say vacuoles are present there mostly in the plant cells. Whereas centriole and basal bodies, centrosome, they are all present there in the animal cell. They are specific for animal cells. And finally, we need to look at into what is the role played there by the ribosomes that is in the protein synthesis. Before going into the details of this endoplasmic reticulum and other organelles there in the cell, we will look at some basic points related with what is an endomembrane system. Shortly if you say endomembrane system are commonly present in the eukaryotic cell, they are composed of endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi complex, endosomes, lysosomes but not peroxisomes that is omitting peroxisome all other things are continuously present there in a eukaryotic cell and they are referred as the endomembrane system. You just look at the diagram here. You can able to see the continuous association of the organelles what I have listed with the help of a membrane system. So they are commonly referred as a endomembrane system. So commonly they are present in the eukaryotic cell. They consist of endoplasmic reticulum. This the blue color thing is endoplasmic reticulum and then the Golgi body and then the endosomes, you can able to see the endosomes there. Say these are all the endosomes, late endosome, early endosome, you can able to see the endosomes and lysosomes, you can able to see lysosomes here but not peroxisome. Peroxisome are present separately, okay. This is the location from in which the peroxisomes have been present. So they are continuously in turn associated there with the nuclear envelope. If you look at the endoplasmic reticulum, they have been very closely associated there with the nuclear envelope. That is, these endomembrane systems are associated both with the nuclear envelope as well as with the plasma membrane. That is, it will be finally there fusing. This membrane systems associated vesicles will be fusing there to the plasma membrane. The endoplasmic reticulum lumen that is inside content of the endoplasmic reticulum are linked to the interiors of the Golgi body. They are even linked to the interiors of the Golgi body, endosomes, lysosomes via transport vesicles. So these are all the transport vesicles. You can able to see the vesicles, secretory vesicle, transition vesicles. These vesicles are in turn originating there from the endoplasmic reticulum. They are joining there with the Golgi body. From the Golgi body again they will be coming out and they will be finally fusing there with the cell membrane. So this is a way in which the nuclear envelope has been linked there with the plasma membrane through a vesicle based membranous system. That kind of a system is referred as an endomembrane system. Now we look at the first organelle that is endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is an eukaryotic organelle that forms an interconnected network of tubules, vesicles and cisternae within the cells. That is, it will have three different kinds of structures that have been listed there. The 
term endoplasmic means within the cytoplasm that is inside the cytoplasm and the word reticulum is derived from the word meaning network so the presence of endoplasmic reticulum was first recognized by keith porter albert cloud as well as ernest fullman they are the persons who first recognized the presence of endoplasmic reticulum thus in a general structure if you look at they are extensive membrane network made up of cisterni held together by cytoskeleton they have been associated there with the cytoskeleton which we have seen in the previous unit so the phospholipid membranes enclose a space the cisterni it is called as a cisternal space or technically called as a lumen from the cytosol which is continuous with the perinuclear space so this is a technical explanation there with reference to the space of the endoplasmic reticulum i have told you that there are three structures that could be come across there in the endoplasmic reticulum that includes the cisterni the vesicles will be looking like this and then tubules all these three structures are intermingled there in the formation of a endoplasmic reticulum now we will look at into the occurrence of the endoplasmic reticulum first we look at what are the cells which may not be having an endoplasmic reticulum they includes rbc egg cells and embryonic cells which generally don't contain an endoplasmic reticulum whereas the other cells that have been listed there includes the different or two kinds of the endoplasmic reticulum say before going into this thing you need to understand what is a two kinds of endoplasmic reticulum that is smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum here you look at the electron micrographs showing the appearance of a rough endoplasmic reticulum and a smooth endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic reticulum is looking like a serrated margins which is mainly due to the presence of or attachment of the ribosomes there whereas here it is being curvature is so smooth as the ribosomes are not attached there so this is a small difference there between a rough as well as smooth endoplasmic reticulum smooth endoplasmic reticulum are associated there with the adipose tissue brown fat cells and adrenocortical cells interstitial cells of the testes sebaceous cells and retinal pigment cells they are all the one that found to contain smooth endoplasmic reticulum that is one which doesn't have a ribosomes associated there with them the other things are cells that are actively engaged there in the synthesis of proteins such as a acinar cells of the pancreas plasma cells cells of endocrine glands that are involved there in the hormonal synthesis they all found to contain huge amount of rough endoplasmic reticulum that is protein synthesis process have been taking place there with the help of ribosome that have been attached to the endoplasmic reticulum that is the reason they are called as a rough endoplasmic reticulum whereas some cells are highly diverse that is they found to house both smooth endoplasmic reticulum as well as rough endoplasmic reticulum that includes mainly the hepatocytes that is the liver cells which shows what is the role that they could be playing there in the metabolism of an living organism now we look at what is the morphological differences that are existing in the various structures associated with the endoplasmic reticulum there are three different structures that could be present there in the endoplasmic reticulum that is a cisterni a vesicle and then the tubular or tubule forms cisterni are long flattened sac like unbranched tubules having the diameter of 40 to 50 micrometer they remain arranged parallelly in bundles or stacks they are the one that have been called as stacks rough endoplasmic reticulum usually exists as a cisterni form which occur in those cells which have a synthesis roles such as cells of pancreas notochord cell as well as the brain cells the next one is vesicles vesicles are oval shaped membrane bound vacuolar structures 
which are having a little bit higher diameter compared to that of the sister net that is 25 to 500 micrometer. They often remain isolated there in the cytoplasm and occur in most cells but they are much more abundant there in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And the third one is the tubules. Tubules are branched structures that are forming a reticular system along with the cisternae and vesicles. That is, they are found closely connected to the cisternae as well as vesicles. Their diameter is an intermediate compared to that of the cisternae and vesicle that is between 50 to 190 micrometer and they occur almost in all types of endoplasmic reticulum cells. Tubular form of endoplasmic reticulum is often found in smooth endoplasmic reticulum and in basically of a dynamic in nature. That is, they are commonly associated, tubule forms are associated with the membrane movements, fission and fusion things that happens between the membranes that is during the process of endocytosis, exocytosis. These are the times at which there will be a lot of fusion there that will be happening there in the membranes. And they are also associated there with the cytocavity networks.